All right, you guys, so like, share, subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you guys get all the updates whenever we release video content on the channel. Shouts out to the Lions Den community. Salute to my brother, A Weapons. He repping life music. Make sure y'all following us on social media, on our Instagram. Also, make sure that you guys check out our Facebook channel, uh, facebook.com backslash ticket TV. All these links are going to be in the description box below. You guys can also catch our podcast show. Make sure y'all subscribe to our podcast show. We'll have all the hidden content that you guys didn't see from our podcast show. Uh, so all of the links will be pinned below. Salute to everybody who donates to the stream. And we're going to get ready to get started with this stream today. Now, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Much love, honor, respect, and appreciation. Yeah, man. So this thing getting real now, y'all. And so I appreciate everybody that's checking in this morning, that's tapping in with us um, early this morning, man. Salute to all of you guys in the building. And let's talk about this situation that's happened with uh, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, as according to reports that have just come out. And oh, salute to everybody, man, that subscribed to the podcast, man. We have passed 2,500 subscribers, man. Bro, I'm so proud of the people that's on my channel that have supported me, show my channel love. And, um, you know, what I'm saying I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all bigger and stronger than anybody that can hate or anything we got going on, man. I salute all of y'all, man. We had we're over 2,500 subscribers. And we're pushing the 3,000 subscribers on the podcast. So if y'all haven't done that, click the link pinned at the top of the comment section. It's pinned at the top. And subscribe to the podcast show today. And let's get to 3,000 subs by the end of this coming week. So And let's keep pushing to, to, to for more more, more excellence over here on the channel, man. I appreciate y'all. And I will have more content coming out today. I had a lot of content I put out yesterday. I have more today on the podcast. But let me get to this. Um, So... According to reports, there are new reports out now about this situation with uh, uh, Michael Jordan and PED allegations. Now, um, according to the reports, and I'm going to put this on the screen right here for you guys so you guys can see exactly what we're talking about. According to the reports, um, it says that, um, you know, Kwame Brown has now reacted uh, to Agent Zero, Hibachi, Gilbert Arenas, um, insinuating that Michael Jeffrey Jordan using uh, illegal PEDs. Now, I'm going to get into this. Hold on one second. Let me fix that echo real quick. I want to make sure I put this on here for you guys. I don't want to give y'all no um, misinformation or nothing like that in this video, man. I want to make sure everything is, is out here perfect. Okay, here we go. Let me put this out here right. All right, so as y'all see on the screen, I'm going to read you guys the article that's out um, so you guys can see what's going on. So it says Kwame Brown reacts to Gilbert Arenas insinuating Michael Jordan used PEDs. And Kwame Brown uh, quoted in, in this article says, I can 100% say that that is cap. Now, Kwame Brown has come to Michael Jordan's defense after Gilbert Arenas insinuated that he used PEDs when he was with the Wizards. Now, if you guys remember, Kwame Brown was teammates with Michael Jordan when they were with the Washington Wizards. And so Kwame Brown had an up-close and personal look at Mike on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I've seen a lot, some people, um, I know they're going to say, well, hey, how, how does he know Jordan was doing it or not? I mean, just because he was there doesn't mean he saw whether or not Jordan was doing it. Well, you got to ask Kwame Brown that. That's something you got to ask Kwame Brown because he, like I said, he was there. I wasn't. So he says um, in this article, and I'm going to read this article to you guys in, in, in entirely so y'all can get the gist of the article. Y'all smash the like button as y'all come on in. It says there, the, the, that there were eyebrows raised, according to this article. We get with Arenas recently implied that Michael Jordan used PEDs. One of the points Arenas brought up was Jordan was playing all 82 games as a 40-year-old when he was with the Wizards. Um when he was with the Wizards, uh, Kwame Brown was a teammate of Michael Jordan at the time, and he has now reacted to Gilbert Arenas' comments. It says that I can 100% say that that's Cap Brown said MJ wasn't on anything. At age 38, 39, 40 years old, MJ wasn't outrunning any other young guys. MJ wasn't coming down the lane, tomahawk dunking on anybody. He was very old, and you could tell this was an older guy out there with younger people, with young people. He's not an older guy that's still dunking on people through the lane, full full fast breaks, 
coast to coast and the things we're seeing now uh is what Quan Brown said. He also suggested that, you know what I'm saying, <clears throat> um he also said he's not accusing LeBron James of using PEDs. What he's questioning he has questioned why the media have not dug into the allegations that it was brought against by Chael Sonnen and by um by others, uh uh, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett and some of the others against LeBron James. And, and just some of the things that he's seen that he's seen on the court, he's never seen before. He says, am I saying LeBron is on something? Question mark? No. He says, I'm just comparing the two around the same age. I had a very close look at MJ, and now I'm seeing LeBron, and I've never seen anything like this. Now, when Kwame was talking about I've never seen anything like this, he was basically saying he hadn't seen no guy at that age outrunning the young guys, out jumping the young guys, you know what I'm saying? Still got energy the way LeBron did and still able to move at the level and be and still be able to have the same type of uh, you know, um, you know, wherewithal that he had even when he was, you know, 10 years ago, is what Kwame Brown was saying. <clears throat> so for you guys, uh, uh the article says that Brown never saw anything that suggested Jordan was using PEDs at the time. You know what I'm saying? Sure, he was productive on the court during his stint with the Wizards, but he wasn't act, 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 uh, exactly dominating on a nightly basis. This is a 2002-2003 season was Jordan's last in the NBA. He averaged 20.6 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.5 steals, and 0.5 blocks in that campaign. Those are fine numbers for someone at that age, but Jordan was still a shell of a, his former self. This was a man who flew all over the court during his time with Chicago Bulls to win six championships, six finals MVPs, five MVPs, and 10 scoring titles. We didn't see that version of Jordan when he was with the Wizards. There were some great performances, but like most older players, he could not do it on a consistent basis. You understand what I'm saying? It says that as Brown pointed out, he looked like an older man, but because he was so skilled, he was able to produce on the court. He certainly wasn't playing the way LeBron is right now. You understand what I'm saying? And it also report says that LeBron James play has led talk to uh, has led to the talk that he is using uh, illegal PEDs. But like Jordan, he has never failed a drug test. And so, um, listen, man, here's the thing right here. Right. I'm just going to tell you all right now. <clears throat> Y'all already heard me and no chill. I, we had I had my thoughts about it. He got his thoughts about it. Um, I haven't seen. And in the end of Michael's career, Michael was not an athletic guy. He wasn't out running young dudes. The only thing Mike, they used to call him Floor Jordan. Fade away, mid-range, jab step, pull up. Nothing crazy, nothing difficult. You know what I'm saying? Nothing out of this world. You know what I'm saying? Not no going through three dudes, jamming on everybody and all this other stuff. Not none of that. You didn't see the same type of stamina stuff that was going on. It, it seemed like a man that was like a shell of himself. If you watch Mike in the 90s, if you watch Mike in the late 80s, there was a there that was not nowhere near the same Mike that you see now. Uh LeBron James, what people are saying is is that you're 40 years old, but it's like you're still running like a gazelle. You're still jumping like a deer. You still, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a like a kangaroo. It's just I, some people are saying it's, it, it is against the laws of physics for the human body to be able. People are saying naturally to continue to do that. These are the allegations that's being brought against LeBron James. People was upset because nobody in his camp spoke about these allegations. He has his own show out now, and he says that he put the show out because he wanted to stop the comparisons. And really, the truth is he wanted to stop people comparing him to Mike because he can't live up to Michael Jordan. So he doesn't want those comparisons on the media, but he the same one that's coming around here saying he's a GOAT. So when you say you're the GOAT, people are going to compare you. Point blank, period. When you say you're the GOAT, people are going to compare you to who they really think is the GOAT. And so that is the reason why LeBron James gets those comparisons. When you walk around with live GOATs and do all this other stuff he's been doing, this is the reason why people are saying that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just being honest with y'all, man. And so, again, uh, you know, Kwame Brown, was played with Michael Jordan in his last years in the league. He played with Michael Jordan. 
So he saw up close and personal. He told me on this channel, Kwame was saying that Mike could barely get through some of the practices. He was trying to do everything he could to get out there in the game and just give everything he had to, to the, all the people because th that was his farewell. That was his farewell. So he literally was out there giving everything he had for all the people on the court. <clears throat> and that is what Michael Jeffrey Jordan was doing according to Kwame Brown. You know what I'm saying? So him answering Gilbert Arena to what Gil was saying, you know, Gil said some stuff about Michael Jordan going bald. And that is the reason, you know, that's one of the reasons he's like Michael Jordan had no hair all of a sudden and was bald. Uh, but, you know, <clears throat> you know, um, that went through Michael Jordan's family. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his father went bald. You know what I'm saying? So that could have been a hereditary thing. You know what I mean? Um, and also, uh, <clears throat> I forgot what else I was going to say. I had something else I wanted to say to that, too. Uh, also, um, I forgot how what else he said. He said one other thing, too. I forgot what else he said. He said, uh, um, I forgot what else he said uh, that, that pu pushed Jordan out differently from everybody else. But I just didn't agree. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, again, you could see Jordan's breakdown later on in his career. You could see, like, he wasn't the same type of dude. It was nowhere near the same guy. It was basically, we called him Floor Jordan. You know what I mean? Jordan was out there. People was just basically celebrating the legacy of Michael Jordan, not that Michael Jordan that you saw with the Wizards. You know what I mean? He still could be crafty and pump fake you three times and shoot fadeaways. And his game was so crafty that, yeah, he could hit shots. And that's why I told Gil, I said, Gil, bro, you can go to the NBA right now as you train for five or six months. If Gilbert Arenas trained for the entire summer right now, he can go in the league right now, average 14 in this NBA. Because why? Gilbert has the ability to shoot the ball from anywhere. So when you had the ability to shoot the ball like Gil did, what, what the hell are we talking about? He had This dude had an ability to put the ball in the rack wherever he was at on the court. So with that being said, we ain't got to talk about nothing else. We ain't got to talk about nothing else. His ability would, would have been able to get him in this era where you can't, they can't touch you. You know what I'm saying? They can't touch you. Uh, they can't um, foul you hard. None of this stuff. You know what I mean? And so these are the all facts of what we're telling y'all, man, like, in this area right here, man, a guy like Gil, guys who can score, who can put the ball, I'm talking about who can shoot the ball, put the ball in the rack. Man, listen, you can still put up numbers in this area if you're playing. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the facts of the situation. That's the that's the facts of the situation. You know? Just being in shape, you can still score. I'm going to tell you all something like, if you would have looked, if Jamal Crawford would have never, um, if Jamal Crawford, was never, uh, you know, um, if he never was forced into retirement, Jamal Crawford still could have still been averaging solid numbers in the league. And how old is Jamal Crawford? Jamal Crawford could have still been averaging 12 to 14, 15 points in the league if he was getting burned. Right? Just based off his skill set. Not him being able to out-jump dudes, out-run dudes, none of that. His skill set, he would have still been able to average 12 to 15 points. You know, and this NBA, because this NBA has invited and opened up a game where shooting is everything. If you can put the ball in the rack and you can score the ball, your game don't have to be predicated off athleticism, speed, and quickness in order to score in this NBA. If you can shoot, the, that's why I always said this, like Steph Curry will be able to average, like look at Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson's body has broken all the way down. Klay Thompson has went through multiple surgeries. His body has broken down. And Klay can still average 14, 15 points in the NBA for the next three or four years. <clears throat> you know why? Because Klay Thompson can still shoot the basketball. Even if he has an offseason, he can still average 14, 15 points a game without the athleticism. Without the athleticism. Steph Curry, his ability to shoot the ball. At the elite level, he can shoot the ball. Steph Curry will be able to average 19 to 20 points for the next four years in the league. For four more years, because of the, Steph Curry's ability to shoot the ball, he will, he, he will be able to average 20 points a game 
for the next four or five years in the league strictly because he's able to put the ball in the rack. Think about that. Think about that. I really want y'all to think about that. You know what I mean? And that's just the truth. That's just the truth. So, um, I'm just being honest with y'all about this whole situation. When you look at different guys and you look, like I said before, man, it's not always based off. See, and, and the thing is, the difference people are saying is when they look at LeBron James, they see an athletic dude. They see a dude running through cats, out jumping cats at age 40. Doesn't look like the athleticism, none of that stuff slowed down that much. It doesn't. It's, it's insane. You know what I mean? And the human body, from what, you know what I'm saying, the laws of physics say, with the human body, that's damn near impossible. But, you know, people will say, hey, man, LeBron is a different gene. Take it easy. He was created a different way and a different type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what people will say, you know? Not forgetting that the age, the hands of time have never lost as far as athleticism and stuff. Now, is again, you can get your shot off in this era. Why? Shot creation from other players. Things like that. So if you had, like I said before, if you had an ability to get your shot going, and you had the ability to make shots in this NBA, you could put up numbers. Bro, they out here scoring 150 points a night. They out here scoring 150 points a night. L Dog was good. Salute to y'all. Y'all already know my G. So I'm just telling y'all what the truth is, man. Y'all can get mad, but I'm telling y'all what we watching. It's not hard for dudes. You see them bench players come off the bench and get 30 easy in this era. You never saw that in the older eras where dudes were getting so many 30-point games off the bench. The NBA wasn't like that. Wasn't like that. Now it is. You look every other night, every couple of nights, Malik Monk out here getting 28, 29, 30. Other guys come off the bench doing that on a regular basis. And so let me let I mean make it make sense. I'm watching Peyton Pritchard out here, got that gonna cross dudes up, sauce dudes up, all kind of crazy stuff. I'm like, what the hell is this? This is the type of stuff that's been going on. So when you look at it in the overall grand scheme of things, again, the way Luka Donich is playing, his game is not based off athleticism. He might average 20 points for 20 years in the league, easy. Why? Because his game is not based off athleticism. He's slow now. But his ability to shoot the ball, be crafty, and his strength allows him, his wits allow him to be able to score the basketball. And that's just the truth. So when you saw Mike later on in his career, you know what I'm saying? When you saw Mike later on in his career, you know, um, You didn't see superb, supreme athleticism. You didn't see that. <clears throat> you did not see that. What you saw was, what you saw was, is you saw a guy that used a series of moves, pump fakes, fadeaways, and things like that to get his offense and his, and his game going. You didn't see a dude high flying no more. You literally saw post-ups, fadeaways, and things like that. With LeBron, the older he's got, the less post-up you've seen. You've seen more threes, more off-the-dribble action to the basket, more coming down the lane, yamming on dudes, more alley-oops. That's why people are saying the stuff that they're saying and making those allegations, and that's why people want to understand why is everybody quiet about those allegations but they can talk about these alleged gambling allegations uh, that's, you know, coming, that's an investigation into it, you know what I'm saying, with Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. Make it make sense. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Like, share, subscribe. Much love. And subscribe to the podcast. We got 2,500 subscribers. We on the way to 3,000 right now. So make sure y'all subscribe and be a part of the, the show and a part of the love early. Much love to y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.